from the bridges you cross every day to the engines that power your vehicles, from the satellites orbiting far above to the tiny microchips powering the phone in your hand. There is one invisible yet powerful phenomena that quietly influences how all these things are designed and built and how they survive the test of time. Thermal expansion. It's an effect that can make materials grow, shrink, bend, crack or fail all because of a simple change in temperature. And if we ignore how temperature changes affect a design, the consequences aren't just minor flaws. They can become dangerous structural problems. A material might crack, a part might jam or an entire system could fail. That's why every engineer must understand it, not just as a formula, but as a real world factor that affects every structure and system exposed to temperature changes. So what exactly is happening inside a material when temperature changes? Why does it expand or sometimes shrink? The science begins at the atomic level. Every solid, liquid and gas is made of tiny atoms that are never truly still. They are always vibrating, which means everything around us, from the steel beams in a skyscraper to the glass in a window, is alive with this constant invisible motion. When the temperature rises, maybe from the warmth of the sun or the heat of a working engine, we are essentially giving those atoms more energy. They start vibrating faster and with greater intensity, pushing their neighbors slightly further apart. This tiny, invisible dance of atoms creates a cumulative effect. The material expands. Its length, width and volume all increase. And this is what we call the thermal expansion. A change in material's dimensions caused by a change in temperature. Although the word expansion suggests only increase. But it is a conventional term used to describe both expansion and the contraction that happens with the temperature changes. So when the temperature drops, vibrations slow down, the particles settle a little closer together and the material shrinks. This change is usually tiny often just fractions of a millimeter for everyday objects. But in engineering, even that much can mean the difference between a perfectly fit and a jammed mechanism, or between a stable bridge and a cracked joint. But is there a way to know exactly how much a temperature change will increase the length of a material? Yes, this is the formula for thermal expansion in the material. This simple looking equation tells us that expansion delta L depends on just three things. How long the material is, how much the temperature changes and a unique property called the coefficient of linear expansion alpha. This coefficient is like a material's willingness to expand. Think of aluminium eager to stretch, steel more reluctant. Technically, this is called linear expansion because the material is expanding in one direction along its length. But in reality, when a material is heated, it doesn't just grow longer, it grows in all directions. So when its entire surface area increases, we call it aerial expansion. When its volume changes, we call it volumetric expansion. In most engineering applications like beam, rods or rails, we usually deal with the linear expansion. For objects like a window glass, aerial expansion becomes important. And in cases like tanks, containers or fluids, volumetric expansion is the crucial factor. Each of these uses a corresponding coefficient of thermal expansion, unique to the material and the type of expansion. So once engineers know how much a material can grow, they design deliberate 
calculated gaps in pavements and install expansion joints and bridges, giving the material enough room to expand and contract freely as temperature rise and fall. Now here is where it gets interesting and dangerous. What happens if we don't let the material expand? What if that steel beam in the bridge is locked in place with no gaps left to grow? The atoms still try to push outwards, but the unyielding constraints are pushing back. The material is trapped. As the temperature rises, an invisible internal pressure builds up. A silent struggle between the material's desire to expand and the forces holding it in place. This powerful internal pressure is what we call thermal stress. If that stress becomes too great, the material will eventually give way, often with catastrophic results. This is the invisible battle engineers face every day. It's the reason why railway tracks buckle in the summer sun, why sideways have those deliberate gaps and why a hot glass can suddenly shatter when cold water is poured into it. But there are certain designs and situations where we can't leave gaps. Think of the engine of your car working for hours when you take it on a long trip. It gets incredibly hot, causing its parts to expand. Yet there are no expansion gaps in its design. In such cases, the stresses that develop must remain less than what the material can safely handle. So how do engineers calculate the stress that builds up in a material when its expansion is restricted? Here comes the second formula. Used in designs where leaving a gap isn't an option. This formula calculates the invisible thermal stress that builds up when the material is constrained. This stress sigma depends on three key factors. The material's stiffness, known as Young's modulus, its willingness to expand alpha, and once again, the change in temperature. This formula reveals the invisible pressure that builds inside a restrained material. It tells engineers whether a welded pipe will survive the hot summer heat or whether a glass window might shatter the instant cold rain splashes against its hot surface. In practice, both formulas work hand in hand. One predicts movement, the other ones of the forces when the movement is restricted. Together, they turn invisible atomic vibrations into numbers, a language that engineers can use to design with and lives can depend on. This simple understanding of thermal stress fundamentally changes how we build our world. The applications of these principles extend far beyond bridges and sidewalks. They are the rules governing our engineered world. From the massive scale of industrial machinery to the microscopic world of electronics. Consider the steam pipe in a power plant, which are often rigidly fixed at key points to manage weight and pressure. However, these pipes carry extremely hot fluids and if they didn't have room to expand, the relentless heat would build up enough thermal stress to warp or rupture them. But since these are continuous pipes, a simple gap won't work. Instead, engineers incorporate a brilliant solution. They install what is called an expansion loop. Those deliberate U-shaped bands in the piping that provides a flexible section to absorb the thermal movement and protect the entire system. The same challenge is faced in engines, turbines and industrial machinery. Every part must have enough freedom to expand and contract without jamming or breaking under the immense heat and pressure. And the challenge gets even more precise on the tiny scale of microchips and circuit boards. Engineers must account for minuscule expansions in materials. Without this understanding, repeated heating and cooling cycles can cause invisible cracks, solder joint failures, or warped boards 
that lead to device failure. But you don't need to be an engineer to see this in action. You might have noticed how overhead electrical power lines seem to sag more in hot summer day and become much tighter on chilly morning. This is thermal expansion happening right above your head. Whether you are building a skyscraper, laying a pipeline or designing a spacecraft, one truth remains. Every material expands when heated and contracts when cooled. Accounting for this invisible dance of expansion and contraction is what keeps our world functional and safe. And now I would love to hear from you. Have you ever noticed a sidewalk with those deliberate gaps or seen a power line sagging in the heat? Or have you seen a more dramatic example of thermal failure? Share your observations in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. With that, I would like to thank patrons and members of my channel for supporting elementary engineering financially. If you also like the video, you can support elementary engineering on Patreon or join the channel here on YouTube to unlock the members only content. Find the links of books and other sources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Read Thermal Expansion and Thermal Stress at elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. Thank you.